Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in this video we're going to carry on our series, which at this point is part 13, I think, and we're part 10 of the wide body creation. So uh, we've created a pretty decent fender at this point. We have most of the details ironed out, but of course, depending on how detail-oriented you want to be, there are always going to be more things to fix. So in this video, I am going to try to address all of the little issues that we kind of left up in the air at the end of the last, and we're going to start to talk about thickening this thing and, and making it a solid. So there are a couple of key areas that we want to focus on, things that we need to get right before we start 3D printing. So as we look at this design, there are a couple things that stick out to me. Uh, first of which is the way that the light is shining right here on the fender. I don't really like the way that light is hitting there and I don't know why it is. So we have to investigate the curvature a bit. Another area where I'm not really happy with it is in this front corner here, this triangle. As we move the light around, there is sort of this irregularity that happens. So the light starts to pinch in the middle here. And as we move through, as soon as we get to that star point, this corner right here, you can see that the reflection goes kind of strange here and it starts to pull in here. So that is definitely something that we have to fix. This is kind of a maybe problem that we should look at. Maybe it's an issue, maybe it's not. This one up at the front is definitely an issue. That's something I would not leave uh, in order to, to 3D print this thing. So that's something that we want to address. And then the kind of the last couple things that we need to think about is what's going to happen in this opening here. So the stock body is obviously quite a bit smaller. Do we just leave it open and have that be sort of a, a vent or just a stylized feature as we sort of pull away from the bumper? Is that going to stay open? Are there going to be any additional aero features? So I mentioned making something off of the bumper down here. Are those going to be canards that sort of fill in the space and kind of, you know, bump it out so it looks like we've got a smooth transition? Is there going to be anything that fills in the back here between the stock fender and the wide body piece here? So these are all kind of design elements that you need to think about. Now, I don't want to attack all of them. I know I've said this in a couple of the previous videos. I'm not 100% sure that this is going to be the direction I go with the car. So I'm not going to do all kinds of these little detail, these fine points that you can really spend a whole bunch of time on. If you're not making this part for this car, then there's really no need to spend 10 hours on these little finer points. So we're gonna try to hit the big things, make sure that we tackle some of the problem areas that I see. Things like this, where the original mesh is sort of peeking through in areas, I'm not really concerned about that because when we thicken this thing into a solid, we're thickening it away from the car body. We're not gonna be thickening, it, thickening toward the car body, so these little areas where we might have some overlap, not really a big concern for me. We have to look or think about things like the resolution of the mesh, which we talked about in the first couple of videos. Uh, now, the way that we did this, the resolution of the mesh, the quality of the mesh is good, and, and we're not really worried about that. If you are using a hobby scanner, maybe you don't have quite the resolution or the accuracy then you need to think about, well, is that little spot of the mesh peeking through, is that a problem or is that just an accuracy thing? So if you want to follow along, I hopefully you've been following along to prior videos and modeling this as well. If you haven't, you can go to the description and you can download the data set there and follow along from here. One thing I always like to do is I like to hide the body before I edit the form. Now, the reason for that is because as we hide the body, we then don't have that transparent image on the screen that makes it kind of hard for us to make big adjustments. Then control and six on the keyboard to bring the edges. Make sure that the mesh is unselectable. So right click and unselectable and it should speed things up a little bit and just kind of prevent us from grabbing onto it. It still will allow us to do things like apply appearances. If we hit A on the keyboard and we wanna change the color to say red, we can drag it onto the body in the folder we can't drag it onto the body on the screen because it's unselectable, but we can still do it here in the folder. So we can still do a couple of things with the mesh, but overall, you just kind of have to turn it on and off when you want it. Things like pull where we attach the form to the mesh, those will still work and it will still pull down to the mesh. But again, there are things that we need to address. So as we look at this design, remember I mentioned there is a potential problem up here that we want to talk about, and there is definitely a problem here. 
So let's tackle the definite problem first, and then we'll go back and look at the potential problem, which might not actually even be an issue. It could just be the shape of the fender and the direction of the light, and it could be perfectly fine. But I've mentioned this in all the other videos, Fusion is not a car design software. It's not intended to be the T-spline functionality, the forms that we're using. This was a purchased technology many years ago and incorporated into Fusion pretty well. It is also an inventor. There are differences in the tools in both of those programs. Inventor is missing some of the key things that I think are important. And it actually has one or two tools that, that aren't in Fusion. So we are going to just kind of always keep that in mind that Fusion is not meant to do what we're doing, pushing the T-splines the in this manner. It really, you have to be very careful. So we just keep kind of keep that in mind. So as we're looking at this area, this edge, that the fact that it has a wobble in it like that is something that we want to address. Now we always say that we want to have four sides and you can see here that we've got three, four, and then we've got this fifth side here. And that does end up causing us problems. We use Alton one and we take a look at it in box display. The reason that these tend to cause problems is because as we move these faces around, as we move these edges around, we can start to, and it's gonna be kind of hard to see, but we can start to move these edges in a way that it starts to create a lot of tension in that surface. Now, one of the ways that we can kind of, or try to revert back to it is by selecting an edge and deleting it and letting that face sort of heal itself. We go back to smooth display with Alton 3. Sometimes this will work, sometimes it won't. You can see we actually made things a little bit worse, so Control Z to bring that back. We can always try to use our utilities like repair body and see if we can convert these T points to star points potentially. Now, when we do that, there is of course going to be a word of caution here. Now, when we do that, you can see that the surface in that area looks quite a bit better as we move the light across it. We don't really get that same issue. However, this is going to affect our edges. Now it's going to affect our edges. The box display doesn't actually look any different, but it will start to have an effect on the transitions and, and sort of the way that those edges work. So control and four to hide our edge display. And we just want to make sure that it still kind of fits in with the overall theme that we don't have a super tight transition in that area, but everything actually looks pretty good with those being star points. So I'm gonna say okay and allow it to toggle those to star points. And I think that's a pretty good fix as long as it didn't cause any problems further downstream. There will be areas that you want to pay attention to around that. So control and six to bring our edges back. We wanna make sure, I'm gonna to go to the box display. We wanna make sure that we do make adjustments in these other areas. And I did mention that these areas are not really a concern for me, uh, just simply based on the fact that we're, we're cutting it away. Um, however, I do still want to make sure that the transitions are okay. So I'm just gonna make some small manipulations here, kind of zooming in and out, flying through, making sure that these transitions are going to be similar. And what I'm talking about here is the angle between those two edges. I want those to be similar all the way across the board. And this little thing, I really hate that dialogue. It always pops up right next to the cursor. You can see if I click here, it pops up over here and then it moves next to the cursor. Always seems to be in the way. Um, if anybody knows how to get that to stop, please let me know. I haven't figured out a way to kind of keep it away. But if you happen to have a trick that keeps that thing away from the cursor, I'd love to hear it. Uh, so as we go through, just kind of rotate around, zoom in, figure out what these transitions are doing. If we have to make any adjustments, you can see here this is a clear indication that we have a problem in that area. And what I mean by that is this edge right here, there's a point, let's go ahead and rotate this around. We have a point there, which is a T point, but the edge is not straight. And when the edge is not straight, what ends up happening is this surface gets a ton of tension. And again, the way that we can fix this sometimes is we can just delete this edge, which automatically forces this to sort of fix itself it can present itself as problems in surrounding surfaces, but we go back to insert point and just kind of bring that back. And then hopefully it helps sort of heal those regions. 
Uh, once again, I would love for Fusion Forms to have edge weighting control. So if you've worked in Blender or if you've worked in other programs, not many of the Sub-D programs that I've used have this besides the, uh, the N-Power power surfacing add-on for SolidWorks. It had edge weighting where you could give it a weight from zero to 100. Zero is perfectly smooth, 100 is a crease, and anywhere in between. And that would help prevent you from really bunching up these edges to get these transitions. So this would be a single edge, this would be a single edge. And all we would do is we would say edge weight 50, edge weight 70, and it, we wouldn't have to go through all of this effort of putting all these edges and bunching them all together. But we don't have that, so we work with what we have and kind of make sure that we, we do the best we can. So I think this corner's fixed. It looks pretty good, control and four to hide our edges and just rotate things around. Again, all of this is getting cut out from this edge right here. It's getting cut out. Another thing that I do want to do is I wanna look at inspection and curvature map analysis. I'm gonna to go to the principal max. And what I'm looking for here is the red lines, which are going to represent, in this case, the limit is 25 millimeters. It's gonna represent the radius in those areas. As I begin to drop this down to lower values, what we want to see is, or what we would ideally like to see, is a consistent line all the way across our stylized features. So when we look at these red lines, we see that we've got a red line here, and it sort of disappears as it gets closer to the fender. We also can see that this red line kind of jumps around here. Now, this isn't ideal, but again, we kind of work with the tools we have. We do the best that we can with the tools that we have. And ideally, I would love to see this red line be a consistent width all the way up until it starts to disappear into that fender. Same thing here, all the way until it disappears. Now, of course, if we just kick these all the way up, it kind of exaggerates the issue a little bit. You can see that these are okay, but there's this light green spot right in the middle. Uh, that generally means that, that the geometry is gonna pull a bit. You can see over here, we kind of have a similar thing going on. And the fact that these are bumping up and down, especially in the areas where we have our T-points and these edges, these creases coming in, this means that it's going to pull those a little bit. The surface quality is gonna get pulled a little bit. But again, I always go back to talking about the end goal of manufacture. So this thing is gonna be 3D printed. That nuance or that little detail is gonna completely get erased when we go to 3D print this, just based on the resolution of a 3D printer, printing a part with this much curvature and this size. So again, you have to really think about the tools you have, the limitations, but also what, how are you going to make this thing? Now, if I was gonna send this to a CNC machine and cut this out of foam, I would not be happy with the results, but knowing that I'm going to 3D print this, potentially, put body filler on, sand it, and turn it into a fiberglass plug or mold, or just leave the 3D print and sort of smooth it out. Knowing that, I don't really care about some of those little bumps and changes in the curvature. But again, if, if the end goal of this was to send it to a CNC machine and pay to have it cut out of foam, I would want to figure out a way to get those to be a little bit better. So everything looks pretty good so far. Nothing in that edge really stuck out to me on the curvature map analysis. As we look at the shape here, I'm using perspective with ortho, which means that when we're looking at it from the front, we don't have perspective. If you really want to see this, how it would be on the car looking at it from the front, just turn on perspective only, and we can bring back the mesh and kind of get an idea of what this thing looks like. We can look at it from the top, again, with perspective, and kind of get a feel for how this thing is going to look. At any point in time, go back to perspective with ortho if you want a true orthographic view. And really what we look at at this point is we wanna make sure that the flow or the transition of these edges makes sense. So you can see we've got this nice transition to this wide section and then we kind of cut back, the curvature cuts back up front. And that's because we're trying to smoothly transition back to the stock lines of the car. Now there are a lot of cases where you have a wide body design that starts at the stock lines of the car and then just bulges out without trying to have any smooth transition. And that's perfectly fine. That's very much an 80s boxy style of flare. And that's how the original wide body versions of this car were. But 
not really what I'm going for. So again, these are kind of things that we need to think about. So overall, I'm pretty happy with that. There's nothing else that I really want to incorporate into this design in the forms environment. So I'm going to finish the form, which will bring us back to the surface. And hopefully all of the trim should still be fine. We didn't make any drastic changes. There is a new patch layout in this area, but if we do control and four, just make sure that there's no, again, no glaring issues. There was a little bit that I saw there with the reflection, but again, you have to think about the 3D print, the resolution and quality. And overall, I mean, I think that looks pretty good. I think that the shapes look pretty good. And all that looks pretty good. So at this stage, we now have a surface. The surface is the shape that we want. And we need to decide any other details that we want to put in at the surface level. Now, the reason we want to do that is because once we go to thicken this part, once we begin to turn it into a solid, then it becomes a little bit trickier. We have to be a bit more careful about building out these different features. Uh, at this stage, I don't really want to add too much at the surface level for this design, but there are certainly things that you can do and you can incorporate in your own design. So an example of that is we have the original fender underneath here, right? We've got quite a bit of space between the stock fender and this version. So one thing that we could do is we could incorporate some vents into the top portion of the fender. Now, I think that looks really cool on certain cars. I had a subscriber send me some images of a Porsche that has some really neat vent features built into the fender. I don't necessarily know if that's the direction that I would go for an actual part like this, but I think it's important that we at least talk about it, explore it, and see if it fits in. Now, if you end up having a wide body design, and let's say you're gonna incorporate some vent features in the hood, it might look pretty cool to incorporate those into the fender flare as well. So one thing I would suggest if you decide to start branching out and looking at these different aero features or playing around with these sort of different unique features, one thing I would suggest is to make copies of the surfaces. There's really no downside to doing this. We're dealing with a freeform body and any copies that we make of the surface are going to carry all of those features as well. So I'm just gonna select the surface, Control C and Control V, and just make an exact copy. So I have the original one where I likely will go back to and I'll you know, do some modifications to that. But this one here is now the copy version where I can start exploring things like adding those vents to the fender. So let's go ahead and just play around and see what we can do from an arrow standpoint. Now there are a couple of different ideas about how to do vents. Now obviously this thing sticks away from the car and one of the sort of standard straightforward ways would be to just build in some vents back here, some ridges, some canards, whatever the case might be on the fender itself back here. But let's go ahead and let's just explore putting them on the top of the fender. So we've got some body lines, we've got some style lines here at the top, we can see kind of see, it might be a little bit hard to see for you guys, but uh, we can see that there is a line here. If I go to inspect and curvature map analysis, again, principle max, I will kick this up. So that red line there, that was the body line, even though there's not a, a divide in the surface, that body line is there. And we want to kind of stick in between these two red lines. So these two red lines represent those body, the body lines, the body features that we're replicating. This is the top part of the fender. If we take a look at the car, that's the top part, starts to roll over, and we carry those stylized features over. So the first thing that, that I would do in a case like this is I would just start a sketch on the top plane, and I'm gonna rotate this back around, and I would try to sort of create some sketch something that mimicked those lines. It doesn't have to be perfect, but I'm just gonna use a fit point spline. I'm gonna start back here and somewhere up here, say okay. And I'm gonna do the same thing here and say okay. This gets a little bit tricky. I'm gonna hit escape. On my fender itself, I'm gonna right click and go to opacity control and kick this down to like 20%. Now it's gonna still be a little bit hard to see 
we can kind of see the pink and the red. And it's going to be harder for you to see than it is for me to see. But what we're looking to do is take these splines and just gradually change their curvature to match what's underneath there. Now, once I've done that, I'm going to set the opacity back to 100. And I want to take these lines and just select them and kind of see, you know, do they match? Do they line up with those red lines? We can always turn off the analysis as well. It'd be a little bit easier to see the blue selected line over top of the red fender. And that looks pretty good just visually from the top. So now we have sort of the extents of where those ridges or those features are. Now we can kind of determine or decide what's going to happen in between there with the, the vents and the fins that we might want to put in. Well, the first thing I need to do is I need to offset those some amount so that I don't just create a cut directly on that feature. So because both of these are just un, they're not they're not fully constrained, they're not dimensioned, I could just move them or we could use offset and we could select them and then just offset it in a certain amount. I'm going to say 15 millimeters. I'm going to, um, once that, I don't know why this is taking a while, but once that offsets, I'm going to go ahead, right click and repeat it. And I'll do this one. This one will be uh, 15 as well. Uh, it doesn't have to be perfect. Again, we're just looking at things visually. And if I hide the fender, essentially what we have is this line, which I'm going to turn into construction using X. And then we've got sort of the, the lines where we want to contain that vent. When we look back at the fender, we also need to determine where those are going to stop. We've got this back edge of the fender. I'm going to use a line, and I'm just going to kind of mimic that to get an idea of that angle. I'm going to hit Escape, and I'm just going to take that line. There's an extra one that was created here. Just delete that. I'm going to take that line and just move it forward until it crosses through that trim point. That's basically the back edge of the hood where the, um, you know, the windshield wipers and the cowl vent and all that stuff are. So now that I have this line, I'm going to create another line where I want the venting to sort of stop. And I'm going to do this and I'm going to create a slightly different angle. So a little bit more angle here. And once I'm happy with those, I can modify and trim them away. Again, we don't have anything fully defined. So we're able to easily do this without breaking any links. It is going to say that it's breaking a coincident relationship because of our construction lines there. Uh, but essentially what we've done is we built in this little area here. Once we're happy with that, if we try to trim away the splines of the offset curves, it will let us do that. But it is going to yell at you, uh, essentially because what you're doing is it says you're, you're upsetting or you're messing with what is considered the offset constraint. Now, an offset constraint Again, it's just basically saying that it's offset a certain distance from this line. We don't really care in this case, the line's underdefined, but that just means that if I move this, nothing's gonna happen to this anymore. Where if I go back to before I did the trims, if I move that, the line would move with it. So just keep in mind that when we do things like this, we are actually going to be breaking some of these constraints. And again, that's fine, just because nothing's fully defined. I don't really care. It's just a visual thing that we're doing at this point. We're figuring out where that area is that we want to put any vents in the fender, and then we're just gonna sort of build it out from there. Okay, so now the next part of this, and, and I again, full disclaimer, like most of my videos, this is me going through this the first time. I haven't pre-modeled this feature at all. I didn't actually even plan on doing it in this video. So this is, how I would approach it. This is how I would think about this process. Now that I have this sketch, what I would do is I would take this sketch, I'm gonna go into modify, and I'm gonna say split body or split face. Either are gonna be fine. If I split the body, it's going to break it up, but it's gonna still keep it a single surface body. If I say split face, it'll get rid of, or it'll create two surfaces. So split face, or split body, again, either will be fine. I'm gonna use uh, just split face for this example. And what this allows me to do is now take each of these that are now part of this split, and we're gonna create an offset. Now the offset is going to be zero. You will need to turn off tangent selection because for whatever reason, even if you pre-select it, it thinks that you want the whole thing. But basically what we have now is we've got that surface that we can start building out our vents on. 
So let's bring back the fender again. And now you can kind of see when we look at it from the side, that's where that piece sits. You can look at it from the front and you can kind of see where the, the piece sits. And when we look at it from the top, you can see where that piece sits. It actually has a, a pretty nice position. And if we we're going to incorporate some vents, let's say on the hood, for example, uh, we could follow that onto the hood and sort of maintain those lines and, and you know work with that as well. Again, not really the intent here. I just want to kind of look at and, and talk about how we could make these features. So now that we have this piece, what I want to do is I want to start to think about the areas of this that I want to be a vent and how I want to confine those in relation to the fender. And when I think about that, I'm going to use the ruled surface tool. And that ruled surface tool allows me to select an edge, in this case, it's going to be the boundary. And I can begin to build out uh, essentially the outside portion of this fender. Now, if we use the normal type, it's going to be going essentially perpendicular or 90 degrees to the curvature of that surface. But what I want to do is go toward a direction and I want to select my top plane. So rotate this around, select the top plane. And this allows me to build this so that it's coming straight down from the surface. I can make it as long as I want now because now I'm not really worried about the curvature direction or messing up anything in the corners. And now I can start to build out essentially a guide or an area where I can build in these different pieces. Now what would probably happen is you would want to design this as its own piece. It could be drop in from the top with a little surround or a little lip on it or it could be epoxied or screwed in from the backside. But generally what you would want is some sort of a lip there. So we're gonna say, okay, to build out that ruled surface, this is going to be where all the vents are sort of confined to. They're gonna follow the shape of the fender and they're going to stick within that surround. But then I might wanna come in and use the same tool, grab the same outside edge. But instead of that, I wanna use a tangency which will allow me to bring out a lip. I can say 20 millimeters, say okay. Using ruled surface instead of something like extend will allow me to make these as new bodies. So I'm gonna call this one lip. Uh, I'm gonna call this one boundary. And I'm gonna call this one uh, surface. Just call them whatever you want. But now I can start to build out essentially this little pocket, which remember our surface, the fender, is going to be thickened outward. So what we're dealing with right now is this inside surface. So this feature would be on the inside of that. So now that we have this, we've essentially got this little lip and this boundary that's gonna allow us to contain any of these surface features. Now, how do we build out something from, uh, you know, essentially from the shape? Well, it can get a bit tricky depending on your curvature, but there are a couple of different ways or, or, or things that we can think about. We can begin to split this up with edges and use things like ruled surface, go toward a direction. And with that direction, what we could end up doing is just tapering it. We could give it an angle and start to build that out. If you want something that is a little bit more um, curved or has a little bit more shape to it, then that really becomes a challenge of breaking it down in terms of how you can model that. So if you're comfortable with modeling in 3D, you could potentially use 3D curves. We've talked about that in some of the surfacing videos. You could also do it as 2D features, or we could take this opportunity to go back into forms and we can build out something like a plane. Now I'm gonna do this fairly simply. I'm gonna do it on this front and just build something here. I'm going to take that whole plane and from the side, I'm just going to move it into position. I'm going to rotate it a bit, maybe scale it up. I need it to be bigger or longer than this, this box. I want it to extend past. So then I need to go from the front or the back and pull it into position. And what I'm looking for is in 3D, i rotate this around a bit, so if you're motion sick, sorry. But what we need to do is we, essentially we need to have this piece go through the entire box. So double click the mouse, get it back on screen. And now that we have this, we can start making the curvature that we want. So this is a really quick and easy way to do this. If we view it from the top and we want it to, let's say, match the surface, 
what we could do is we could just get rid of that middle edge, just delete it, go to modify, I can take these edges and just pull them this direction. And once I kind of match that shape, I can go back to insert edge, put one right in the middle, then using edit form, just start to give it some shape. Uh, and again, it really depends on the curvature that you're working with in your own designs. But basically this allows us to look at the shape of the fender. And what we're going to do, or what we're gonna basically be doing is we're gonna be taking this surface and we're gonna be trimming it with the box that we're building. So when you start to think about things like building the fender, the wide body, the fender, whatever the shapes are, we generally think about them as this one big piece. But oftentimes when we get to these more detailed pieces, we end up going into a process where we call it kind of overbuilding. We overbuild the surfaces that we want and we trim them back. And generally that gives us better shapes than building it to be the right size and extending it out. Extending it out, especially in Fusion, I found causes problems in the shapes and the curvature, but taking the size that you have and reducing it ends up giving you higher quality surfaces. So I'm gonna try to take this upper surface here and it's probably not going to work very well, but I'm gonna to try to offset that down. Uh, I think we went, yeah, you can see here, after we get past 25 millimeters, it starts to fail. Uh, so that's not gonna work. But another thing that we can do is we can select that surface and we can use move copy, which is M on the keyboard. And we're gonna create a copy of that surface. And remember when we created the boundary for this, what we ended up doing is we just pulled it down vertically. So that means if we create a copy of the surface and we pull it down vertically, 50 millimeters, it's going to exactly match the underside of that shape. So right now, if we were to stitch these together, we would have a solid block. Uh, you know, so this gives us basically the top and the bottom surface. So again, it depends on your curvature, depends on what you're doing, but you have to sort of play around with these shapes and think about them in 3D to figure out how they're gonna work. So a couple of other things that we need to be kind of aware of. When we begin to thicken surfaces that are non-planar. So right now, when we look at this, we've got this vent piece that has a lot of shape to it. When we look at this from the front, the piece that goes in the fender, that's got all kinds of shape going this direction and we're trimming it vertically here, which would be okay. But when we start to do things like thicken this surface, and I'm gonna do an exaggerated version of this by doing an offset. When we start to thicken this surface, what that means is it's going to be going out normal from the direction of curvature. So nothing here is vertical or horizontal. So this means that up here, it's gonna be coming down essentially towards this annoying little dialog boxes. And over here, it's gonna be coming more back. And basically what's gonna end up happening is if we try to thicken this and then um, cut it away with the surface, we'll get a nice smooth continuous top that matches our fender. However, if we trim the surface and then try to thicken it, the thickened version is not going to match the curvature or the shape of our surface. So the order of operations is definitely important. You want to create a solid body version of this and then trim it away with those, uh, those surfaces. And that's going to give you a better matching result to the shape of the fender. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to uh, thicken and just essentially pick two millimeters, three millimeters, whatever the, uh, the thickness is that you want for your design. I'm gonna do three in this case. And now I've got a solid that I can trim away with this other piece. Now I could stitch all of these together and use intersect, which would be a great option. However, we don't have all of the other, the other pieces yet. So I can't do that quite yet. And remember, we do still want to keep that lip and we do still need to build the box to fit this up to the fender. It has to be its kind of own piece. It could be incorporated into the fender if you were doing a 3D print of everything. Uh, however, it makes sense to do these as separate pieces because you might change your mind, you might change the design elements, and you don't wanna have to reprint or redo everything. This will give you an option to basically create a drop-in piece. A drop-in piece could have just a little heat extractor vent or it could have fins in it or whatever the case might be but essentially making these these elements modular in nature will help simplify the process if you want to change it downstream but what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a pattern 
So we're going to go to a rectangular pattern. And for the direction, I'm just going to use the default Y because that's going to be the, the direction of the car. And you'll notice what happens here. When I do that, these pieces are no longer going to be inside of that box we created, right? Uh, so that is obviously problematic. I'm going to increase this number. Let's take a look at this. Um, yeah, I'm going to just go ahead. We'll do five. That, that'll be okay. But you can see the problem that we're running into here is now these pieces start to be smaller than the shape that's going to be cutting them away. Now on the bottom, they're fine, but on the top, they're not. So we could either move the entire thing up, and that would be a, a good option, or we could go back before we ever turned it into a, a solid body, and we could make the form body bigger. And again, we have that option because everything is parametric. So I'm just gonna roll back before that feature. I'm gonna select this body and hit M for move. And I'm just gonna move it up and maybe forward a little bit and say, okay. Now its new position is going to be captured. And now when we do the pattern, the new ones are now outside of that shape. So the next thing that we want to do is we have to, again, we want to keep some of this design. We don't necessarily need the top and the bottom, but we do need the boundary. So I'm going to copy and paste it. And that boundary is going to be used later with the lip, again, to build this thing all into a solid. But now what we can do is we can stitch a bunch of these pieces together. So we've got the top surface, we've got the boundary, and we've got the bottom surface. When we stitch them together, Fusion will automatically turn that into a solid body if it's a closed, what we call watertight volume. So this now lets us go back to combine. We're gonna use intersect, which will allow us to keep only the intersecting bodies. Target body, will just make it whichever one we want. Uh, that's gonna be the, the sort of combined body that we just created. And then all the tool bodies are gonna be these little pieces here. And what ends up happening is this leaves us with just these little pieces that are going to be the vents that will fit inside the lip and the boundary. Right, so you can see here, everything fits very nicely inside of these walls. And this is gonna help us when we turn this into a solid. So back in our surface tools, we're gonna stitch the lip and this boundary together, which will turn it into its own sort of combined version. And then we can try to thicken it. Now, this is where probably most people get hung up with surfacing, is trying to thicken a surface into a solid body. And usually it's because of curvature. Now, in this case, we've got sharp corners everywhere. We should be okay by thickening this, but you wanna make sure that you do select the entire thing over here in the browser and not just a single face. I'm gonna say three millimeters and try to turn this into a three millimeter solid. There's a chance that it doesn't work and we can see here it doesn't. So we're gonna try two millimeters, see if that works. Um, if this doesn't work, then generally the problem is going to be in this upper face here. Now, if that happens, go back a step before we stitch them together and we've got this boundary piece and try to just thicken the boundary. So again, now, again, we selected it from the browser, not from the screen. And instead of minus three, I'm gonna do positive three, which will thicken it outward. And you can see that it doesn't work when we thicken it outward, but when we do minus three inward, it seems to thicken okay. Now, for whatever reason, it doesn't want to go one direction over the other. And when we look at this, you can see it's building that solid body there. There are some issues that happen in the corners. That's probably where most of our trouble is coming from. We also have the option to do symmetric, which will allow you to go both directions if it will allow it. But we can see that inward seems to work for just that body, but outward doesn't. So I'm gonna cancel. I'm gonna go back to the stitched version and I'm gonna see if I can thicken it that direction together. If not, then we'll have to do them individually. It's never an ideal situation, but it's something that we can try. So thicken, again, select the body from the browser, make sure that we get that entire body instead of doing it as these individual pieces. And you can see minus three doesn't work, but look at the direction the arrow's going. If we try positive three, that should flip the direction and we'll see if it can thicken that. Again, it's just not working. So we'll have to go back to the first plan. We'll delete the stitch, select the boundary. We are going to create and we're gonna thicken that. 
and we'll do minus three. So minus three is gonna thicken that inward. I'm making it a new body for now because I don't necessarily wanna combine it with the other pieces just yet. There are some inherent problems because when we thicken, what ends up happening, you can see here when we thicken, it, it ends up going into a situation where again, it's normal to the curvature. So now we no longer have that nice smooth fit with the top. We can go back and look at that top surface that we had, which is unfortunately now gone. But remember, we have the original fender and we can also go back to that surface and we can use it to trim away those solid bodies. So I'm gonna create another copy of that. Uh, I'm gonna go in and, oh, looks like I made a mistake. Let's just select these surfaces and we'll do a zero offset just to get another version of that. Yeah, so now we got that top surface again that we can use to trim away the solid once we're done. So we have all these extra little vent pieces in there and we still need to figure out a way to get the lip and this piece together. I'm gonna to try to thicken the lip on its own and we'll see if that works. Now, sometimes you'll get lucky and you'll be able to do it, but more times than not, one of these bodies will be the problem. I'm gonna thicken it the other direction. Hopefully it works the other direction. Uh, if not, then the intersection between the two could be problematic. So we'll have to cross our fingers. Whenever you're dealing with a surface that you either built with sketches or sometimes if you, if you built it with forms like we did, then what ends up happening when we do things like extend or ruled surface, it has to kind of get creative in the corners to figure out what should be happening there. But thankfully, it looks like these two were okay. So what I'm gonna do is go back to solids and combine them. We're gonna have to make sure that we're not using intersect. We're gonna use combine and put those two together. And then we're gonna take the copy of the top here and remember, the copy of the top is not quite big enough, so it needs to be extended out. This time I'm gonna use extend instead of using the ruled surface because I wanna give it, uh, essentially, just build it out further like the original surface would. We could also use the fender as the trim tool, but when we use the fender as the trim tool, what ends up happening is it's, it has to calculate everywhere that fender surface could potentially intersect. Uh, this right now is um, is okay. I'm gonna use tangent instead of perpendicular and we're just gonna allow, you can see what happens in the corners. This is kind of messy here. It doesn't really match, um, so it's not ideal. So I think for this case, actually, even though I said that we weren't going to do it, I think I'm gonna use the fender itself. So I'm gonna hide that, bring this back. I'm gonna add all of these in here. I'm gonna combine those together, so solid tools, Combine, we'll use this as the starting body and we'll add all these little ribs in there, join them together. Highlighting is not super great, uh, especially when you've got a body like this that completely surrounds everything. We'll say, okay, bring back the full fender and we'll use that as our trim tool. Now it can be a trim tool, split body, whatever the case might be. If you're still working with surfaces, it can be a trim. If you're working with solids, then you wanna do a split body. So the bodies to split will be that new thing. The splitting tool will be the entire fender. And we'll say, okay. And fingers crossed, this will give us the piece we want and the piece we don't want. So the piece we don't want, right click, remove. And this leaves us with just the piece that we want. Now you can see there are some areas where it maybe got a little creative. Fusion's pretty good about trimming this stuff. If we select it and hit delete, sometimes we'll get lucky and it'll patch that corner very nicely for us. Um, other times it can't just because of the surrounding geometry. And I always forget to do this. It's always a good idea to save before you try that. You can see there it was able to patch it. I'm not gonna press my luck on this other side. Uh, so I do wanna make sure I do a quick save so I don't lose anything and then I can try. But uh, I always get into that case, I'm sure probably a lot of you do as well, where you try something like a fillet or a feature and it kind of hangs up and you, you have that moment where your heart rate goes up a little bit and you maybe lose some of your work. But that looks pretty good. Everything matches the fender, which is what we wanted. We've got those vents in there. And now 
we can take this surface, so back on our surface tools, we can take this and delete it. And when we delete it, what we should see is now we've got this vent piece that sits inside the fender. Now, if we bring back our base mesh, well, you can see that the original car overlaps this. So what we'd have to do then is go back and build out a form surface that matched that shape there, which we did originally, we did delete it, but we did that originally in just that area. And then we could use that to trim away those features. That might be something I cover in a future video. Again, that wasn't really um, sort of the, the idea or the design intent here, but now you can see what that kind of looks like. You've got this vent that is in the top of the fender and it matches the shape. We can see that it does match. It's exactly matching because this is still a surface and that's a solid, but we can see from the front, we've got sort of those vent features. If we look at it from the top, I'm gonna double click the mouse. Uh, we can see those cool kind of vent features. And again, they would need to be cut away from the body just because of the position I put them in and the way that I worked that out. But that could be a neat way to get some air away from the wheel because we are gonna have to cut the fender to put something like this on. But that would be a neat way to sort of get around that. So now that we have that, let us hide it and let's show the fender without the vent in it. And before we do this, let's save it. And we're gonna press our luck and we're gonna try to thicken this thing into a solid. Now, hopefully everything works out fine. We did a lot of work to make sure the curvature was okay and the shape's okay. So fingers crossed, we should be able to select this and just thicken it outward two or three millimeters. It's going the wrong direction. So I'm gonna to try to do a minus two and see if that'll work. And now we have a new solid body version of this. Now, two millimeters is pretty thin. Depending on your design intent and how you're gonna manufacture it, you might wanna do three or, or four, or whatever the case might be. But this is a solid body now. That solid body um, has all of the features and the details that we have. You can see all these hard edges, the wheel well, probably need to toss a, a, a rim and tire in this thing, which I might do for a render. But um, overall, it looks like it fits the car pretty well. You can see there's a little bit of a gap there. But again, double-sided tape, press it against the fender. That would take care of that. We've got the little gap here, which again, could be a style feature. We could build a little piece or an insert that goes in there and directs air toward the brakes but it does match everything that we wanted it to. It matches the shape of the other features on the car. It matches the lines. And overall, I think I'm pretty happy. I'm gonna say A on the keyboard, give it a white appearance. So it matches the underlying, uh, the underlying car. And just take a look at it in the render workspace. I'm gonna change up the scene. It's the crossroads scene, dry lake maybe. All right, so that's pretty good because this gives us a nice, uh, pretty sharp contrast in the shadows. So you can really get a good idea, a good feel here where we've got these sort of um, style lines because you can see it transitions from dark to light based on the direction of the sun. So in the mesh, you can see the top of the bumper where those style lines are and the top of the hood and the fender all have the darker shadows. And down here, it's lighter because this scene is, let's go ahead and just use the environment. Um, this scene has the light sort of bouncing off of the ground as well. So if you turn on the ground plane and let's flatten the ground. Uh, so you can kind of get a, a pretty good idea, a sense or a feel of those body lines that we worked so hard to keep in the design. Uh, so overall, that looks really good. I'm pretty happy. We now have something that is a solid. We also were able to build out a version of this that had that vent in it. Uh, so again, we've got the version that has the vent in the fender, which again, also looks pretty cool. Probably toss that in a render just so we can have it. But that is not the end of this series, unfortunately, if you were hoping it was, it's not. Now, the next step for us is to figure out how to cut this thing up into smaller pieces so that we can attach it back together and 3D print them in different sizes. So in the next video, that's what we'll get into. I'll start to talk about basically different techniques that we can use to slice up the solid body into the smaller pieces, 
there are tools out there that you can use that will do that for you. You give it a size and it can determine how to break it up and put in those dowel features to, to sort of put it together. We're gonna go at it the manual approach, which is not always the best way to do it, but I think it's important to understand how to do these things manually before you get into using some of these tools that will do it automatically for you because they don't always work. Sometimes you will have to do it manually, so I wanna make sure that we understand that first. If you have any questions at this point, please let me know. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.